In this video series, you're going to learn how you can set up your own photo blog. I'm also going to give you some tips on how to monetize your new blog. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is have a domain name and a hosting account to host that domain name. You can go to GoDaddy or Namecheap to register your domain name. So what you do here is very simply just search for a domain name that fits with what your photo blog is going to be about. So just name it whatever you want here. You can either use it like a niche blog where you give it a name of a niche or you can just use it as a personal blog and call it something catchy the way you want it. I already have a name that I'm going to use in mind. So what you would do at this point is you would go ahead and register that domain and pay for it and then you have to get a hosting account for it. I suggest cPanel hosting. That makes things a little bit easier as far as installing scripts is concerned. There are different types of hosting package you can use. If you go to something like this site and you go to web hosting, you'll find that they have some plans that are very reasonable. This baby plan is very good, $7.95 a month. You get unlimited domains, disk space, and bandwidth. That's a really good bargain, so you could order that one, for instance. And it's just go through and fill out the form, tell it what your domain name is, do the payment. And what they'll do is they will send you an email telling you what you need to set your name servers to. Name servers point your domain at your hosting account. Once you have that information, you can go back to your domain manager and you can set the name servers. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Okay, so this is what my domain manager looks like. And what I would do is I would just go and open the control panel here and then I can change the name servers. Okay, and you go into name servers. Okay, and then what you want to do is put in your name servers, put in I host my domains with another provider down here, and then put the name servers in these boxes that you were given by the hosting provider. Click OK, and then what will happen is they will get set up. Things will propagate. If this is a brand new domain registration, that usually happens pretty fast, just within a few minutes. If you've had the domain for a while, it could take up to 24 hours for your hosting account and your domain names to get hooked together. Okay, so now we have our domain and our hosting account set up. What we're going to do now is we're going to install our scripts. We're going to use WordPress for our photo blog. There are other photo blogging platforms out there, but they just don't compare to WordPress. I did look over a few of them, and they were lacking in several ways. WordPress is very powerful for a lot of things, and photo blogging is no exception. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the latest version of WordPress. Just go to WordPress.org, and then what you want to do is download the most current version. So click there, where it says Download and download the zip version over here and save it to your desktop or somewhere on your computer where you can easily get at it. Once it's downloaded you want to unzip it. You can download a free unzipping tool called 7-Zip and then all you do is you right click on the file and then you use the 7-Zip option and then extract files. Windows also has a built-in extractor that you can use just by clicking on it and then you can just say extract files. I like to use 7-zip, it's much faster. So all you have to do at this point is click OK and it unzips everything for you. At this point we're ready to upload the script to our hosting account. To do that you're going to need what's called an FTP client. There's one called FileZilla, it's free and again you can just do a search on FileZilla and download it to your computer and then install it. Here's what FileZilla looks like after you install it. On the left side you have your drives on your own computer. The right side is where your hosting account is going to appear. So all you have to do to get started you can put in your host name here which is your domain name and then the username and password that you chose when you set up your hosting account or the one that they emailed you. 
and then just click quick connect and you'll connect up there's also a site manager and what you can do is enter your entries in the site manager and then they are available time after time so at this point you can just connect to your server okay so here's my server over here and on this side we need to find our WordPress install so let's go and find that you just navigate through your hard disk here okay here it is here WordPress 2.92 and our files are inside the WordPress directory in there. So these are the files we're going to upload. On this side, we need to be in the public underscore HTML directory, at least if we're using this hosting account. Your hosting provider will tell you where you need to upload your documents so they're visible on the web. They may be in public underscore HTML, htdocs, or they might just be in the root. So you need to find that out before you start. If your website doesn't show up after you've uploaded everything, that is why, because you haven't put it in the right spot. Okay, on this side, just click on the first one, then hold down the control key and then click the A, and that'll select them all. Okay, and then what you want to do is right click and click upload, and that'll start uploading everything to your server for you. Okay, so wait for that to finish. In the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our cPanel for our hosting account. So that's just your domain name slash cPanel in your browser bar, and that'll take you to your cPanel account. At which point you should see something like this. Now, this is assuming you're using cPanel hosting. It may not be. But what we're going to do is set up a database. So if you're using cPanel hosting, it'll be something like this. If you're not, then you have to find the function where you can set up a MySQL database. Okay, so we're going to go to MySQL databases and then we're going to create a new database here. Let's just call this pblog. You can call it anything you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll create the database and then we need to create a username and password to attach to the database. So we'll, again, I'm going to call it pblog and then we'll give it a password here. Let's call it password. And type it again. Okay, this is a weak password, obviously. Don't use password. Think of something more creative. You can also have it generated for you here. It'll generate a secure password. At this point, click Create User. Okay, and it's created user p blog with the password password. Okay, so our database is all set up and we're ready to install WordPress at this point. Actually, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to attach the user to the database. So if you go down here, it says add user to database. You find your username in the drop down list. So if you have more than one, it may be buried in the list. Same with the database. Find the one that you want to attach to it. Click add and that attaches them together. Make sure you click all privileges. Okay, now you have a user that can access all the database and use all the functions within. Let's check how our uploads go in here. A few left yet. Okay, so at this point everything's been uploaded. Now what we want to do is we want to open up a new browser window and then just go to where our site's located. So the domain name I'm using is called rv-boondocking.info. So I'm just going to key that in up here. Let's just go here and key that into the browser bar at the top. Okay, and the first thing it tells us is there doesn't seem to be a configuration file. Okay, so what we need to do is just tell it to create one. Okay, and then it tells us that we need database name, database username, password, our host, and so on. Okay, so let's click Let's Go. Okay, and we put in our SQL database information in here. So we can get that from over here. So it's rvboond underscore phblog. It's imperative that you take the whole thing, although we only call it phblog, it appends some characters on the front so that's identified as being our database. Okay, so 
let's just copy this. And our database and username are the same. That's how I set it up. So we can do the same thing here. We'll just paste it in. Okay, password is password. Database host, local host, that's usually going to be correct. If it's not, your hosting provider will be able to tell you what it is. Now down here we have our table prefix. You don't need to change this. If you are going to install multiple instances of WordPress in one database, then you're going to need to change this for every subsequent install. We have unlimited number of databases that we can use with this hosting account, so we never have to worry about that. But if you get an account, a hosting account with only one database, then this is how you can install multiple instances in one database. Okay, let's submit here. Okay, here's where it's trying to create the wp.config.php file, but it couldn't do it. The reason is because our folder is not writable. If we go back to our FTP program, and here's public underscore HTML where our files are located. Right click on that, go to File Attributes, and change it from 750 to 777. Now let's just hit the back button here and then click submit. Okay, now we'll be able to create the config file. When we're all done here, we're going to set the permission back to 750. So we'll run the install. And here we fill out the title of our blog, put an email address, and make sure that it allow the blog to be in the search engines is checked if you want it in the in the search engines. And then click install WordPress and it'll install. Okay, here it gives you your admin username and password. Okay, so copy this. And click login. Now it should have also emailed that password to you. Okay, so we'll type in admin. And our password here. Login. Okay, we've logged in for the first time. Let's go to my profile page, like it's saying, warning us up here, and let's change our password. Okay, update our profile. Okay, and we're all set. Now, Let's go back here. Let's right click here. File attributes. Set this back to 750 for security reasons. You don't want to leave that the way it is. Okay. A WordPress blog is now installed. In the next video, we're going to start setting up the essential plugins and get it to look the way we want it to look.